Hello, this is Tony Heller from RealClimateScience.com, setting the record straight about climate. One of the core beliefs of climate alarmists is that the oceans are becoming acidic as a result of increasing carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. They call this ocean acidification. The point being to create primal fear that you're going to be boiled alive by acid. Let's read the description in Wikipedia. Ocean acidification is the ongoing decrease in the pH of the Earth's oceans, caused by the uptake of carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. Seawater is slightly basic, meaning pH greater than 7, and ocean acidification involves a shift towards pH neutral conditions, rather than a transition to acidic conditions. An estimated 30 to 40 percent of the carbon dioxide from human activity released into the atmosphere dissolves into oceans, rivers, and lakes. To achieve chemical equilibrium, some of it reacts with the water to form carbonic acid. Some of the resulting carbonic acid molecules dissociate into a bicarbonate ion and a hydrogen ion, thus increasing ocean acidity. Between 1751 and 1996, Surface ocean pH is estimated to have decreased from approximately 8.25 to 8.14, representing an increase of almost 30% in H plus ion concentration in the world's oceans. Earth system models project that by around 2008, ocean acidity exceeded historical analogs, and in combination with other ocean biogeochemical changes, could undermine the functioning of marine ecosystems and disrupt the provision of many goods and services associated with the ocean beginning as early as 2100. Note that I highlighted the words estimated, models project, and could undermine. As with almost everything else climate alarmists believe in, their belief system about ocean acidification is based on models. Now let's take a look at the real world. My undergraduate degree is in geology from Arizona State University, and then I went into the master's program in geochemistry at the University of New Mexico. This picture of the university was taken a little before my time. I'm not quite that old. I didn't finish up my master's program in geochemistry at the university and instead went off to be a wilderness ranger in the nearby Sandia Mountains. That was great fun, and then I spent the next few years working as a wilderness ranger, running movie theaters, and working as a school teacher. But I did learn quite a bit of geochemistry during my time at the University of New Mexico. Let's look at the Wikipedia claim again. Surface ocean pH is estimated to have decreased from 8.25 to 8.14. Now let's look at some actual measured ocean pH data from Monterey Bay. As you can see, ocean pH varies a lot from week to week. During the time they were taking the measurements at Monterey Bay, it varied from about 7.7 .7 up to 8.1. Now let's look at the claim Wikipedia is making about the change since the 18th century. I superimposed it here as the pink bar. As you can see, week to week changes are larger than the claim change since the 18th century. Nobody really knows what the average pH of the ocean is now, much less back in the 18th century. But the claim change since the 18th century is much less than the week-to-week -week noise. This gives us a very strong hint that the whole thing is just more model-based nonsense. Carbon dioxide levels on Earth for most of the last 600 million years were much higher than they are now. Corals and shellfish evolved during the Cambrian era when CO2 levels were nearly 20 times as high as they are now. If we look over here on this geological time chart, it says Cambrian era, abundant life in the seas. If ocean acidification was a real problem, there wouldn't have been any life in the seas, much less abundant life in the seas. As a geologist, I rely on actual historical data, not fake computer models. Let's take a look at science news for students. Animals, fossils, evolution. When life exploded. Scientists probe what happened 540 million years ago to trigger the biggest emergence ever of animal species. Now let's look at what CO2 levels were right at the time when the biggest explosion of life occurred. Well look at that. The biggest explosion of life occurred right when CO2 levels were at their peak for the last 600 million years. This tells us that carbon dioxide is tremendously beneficial for life. 
As is normally the case, climb alarmists have no idea what they're talking about and they have everything exactly backwards. They rely on computer models rather than history. Computer models can generate any result you want and generally just reflect the inherent biases of the person who wrote the software. The great American physicist and Nobel laureate Richard Feynman said, it doesn't matter how beautiful your theory is, it doesn't matter how smart you are, if it doesn't agree with experiment, it's wrong. Now let's look at what's wrong with the models. If climate alarmists were geologists instead of just theoreticians, they would have known that the oceans are underlain by basalt. Basalt is an alkali rock which comes out of volcanoes and buffers the pH of the ocean. Because the oceans are underlain by alkali rock, the pH range of the ocean is very limited. You could dump a lot of acid into the ocean and it would react with the basaltic rock at the bottom and get neutralized. The pH of the ocean is primarily controlled by the underlying rock, not the atmospheric CO2 content. Thus, we were able to have an explosion of life at 7,000 parts per million CO2. If the pH was controlled by atmospheric CO2, these huge swings would have been catastrophic. So we've pretty much covered the science. Now let's look at some of the psychological aspects of this. Last year, I went snorkeling in Acamal, Mexico with a very progressive friend. The part of the coral reef we went snorkeling at was dead. She was convinced that it was because of coral bleaching and ocean acidification. I did some research online and found that other people had taken very nice pictures of the coral reef at Acamel, so apparently we were just at a bad spot. I know that the reef was damaged heavily by Hurricane Wilma in 2005. And later in the week we went snorkeling at Cozumel about 10 miles away. Cozumel is the second largest reef system in the world after the Great Barrier Reef in Australia. The reef at Cozumel has recovered very nicely from Hurricane Wilma. So it's fascinating that ocean acidification decided to target the reef at Acamel but leave the reef at Cozumel alone. Global warming is just so fickle. I've talked to people at the National Center for Atmospheric Research here in Boulder who've said, well even if we're wrong about climate, we're still doing the right thing because of ocean acidification. One layer of nonsense being justified by another. The Climate Alarmist Clown Show never seems to end. Visit Toto on the web at realclimatescience.com. He's been pulling back the curtain on junk science and propaganda for a long time.